<laughs> That's so cool. You film your elements for real, and you do your trick with real footage, because then it looks real in a really compelling way. I saw it. Did you see it? I totally saw it. What, did you see it? <laughs> no. Oh wait, I see it. <laughs> Thanks to Bessie for sponsoring this video. Hi guys, happy Saturday. I'm Jordan and I'm here to talk to you about our sponsor today, Bessie. So today in particular, I'm here to tell you about their new shoe, the Stormburst. It's their dedicated hiking boot. They have all the same features of the other Bessie shoes. They have the Dymatex material. It keeps your feet warm in the winter and cool in the summer months. They're also 100% waterproof and 100% vegan. They even added an extra rubber outsole so that you have extra grip in those slippery wet conditions. I personally love Bessies because the weather is very unpredictable, but I love to be outside. I love to go hiking. I love to go biking. I'm learning how to one wheel. Whatever it is, Bessie shoes are perfect. And now they have a dedicated hiking boot, so now I don't have to worry about hiking in LA. So if you want to add the new Stormburst shoe to your Bessie collection, go to Bessie.com slash quarter crew and use promo code quarter crew for 15% off of your next Bessie purchase. I think you guys are missing Sam, Nico, and Ren by now. So bye. I'll see you later. Enjoy the rest of the episode. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a chill episode of VFX Artist React. That's right, it's middle of the day Wednesday. It's just me, Ren, and Sam chilling on the couch. No Oscar nominees, just a couple of us boys. We're gonna look at some cool clips. My clips are gonna wake you right up, I promise. Oh, I think yeah? I have clips that neither of you guys have seen that are actually really cool. Well, I got a clip that I don't think you've seen, thanks to the comments of last week's video. And I got a clip that you've heard of, but probably haven't watched. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's jump in. Shot, kid. That was getting close even for me. Star Wars X-Wing, a Star Wars fan film. Sick. Have you seen this, Ren? No. Have you seen this, Sam? Careful, yep. I gotta hit the sign! Oh, it was just a little. <laughs> I saw it. Pick your targets and watch your six. That's a lot of X-Wings. Oh, God! <laughs> oh, I thought those were all Star Destroyers. <laughs> no, it was just Coruscant. A scatter cloner of just <laughs> ships. Those faces are interesting. I, is there like a deep fake pass on that? Wow. Turns out your years of watching VFX every week have paid off. But there's a visor over the face, so it's like, there's some heavy compositing going on in all this. This is insane. Yeah, for a fan film, this is insane. I think they call this, they call this a one -er. Yeah. That's right, this is a one -er. The camera hasn't cut yet. Keeping track of the camera placement and like the scale of your city and making sure there's always something visible is Yeah, not, not to mention easy. like pacing. You have to pace your story without the use of cuts. Like everything just has to happen at cinematic it's all pace. all hard mode. Whoa! Heck Dude. yeah, that was sweet. What? <laughs> what? So sweet. The world's biggest Voronoi fracture. <laughs> yeah. All the dirt. Man, there's so much simulation going on there's right now. There's engine lights through the smoke. The transition of scale is cool here, where it's something feels big and then it feels bigger. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Wait. So the debris doesn't go with the ship? No, the debris doesn't have engines on it. Well, but it's like, okay. Actually, you're right. It totally makes no sense, but it's Star Wars. It's all made up. <laughs> I mean, if they were actually going that fast, how many broken necks would be on board? <laughs> <laughs> Hyperspeed, and then everyone's heads fly off. <laughs> That's a really good Star Wars super cut there. Each time they go to warp speed, everyone's heads just go like <laughs> <laughs> My scans are showing so yeah, this is a fan animation kind of inspired on the old X-Wing game by, I guess, the channel, Noble Engine. They only have this in the behind the scenes on their channel, so it's like, I feel weird calling it a channel. The group, the artists, the... Uh, yeah, the... how big is the team that produced this? I think it's basically just one guy. I could be wrong. We got another Astaris on our hands here, another Peter. This, maybe this could be like a two-guy situation. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know, something about this. I mean, there's obviously other people <laughs> maybe, contributing maybe a, to it. Maybe a three or four guy situation. <laughs> the big challenge I see here is handling scale. You know, there are levels of detail, like how many polygons there are in these building models. And if so, how many of the high poly buildings do we need close to the camera versus the ones that are far in the distance? Because like, yes, computers are great. But ultimately, you know, there are still like bottlenecks. Unreal Engine 5 is like the only other exception to that at the moment with the whole like nanite rendering. You know, people often assume that with something that is fully CG, it's like you hit a button and what we're seeing in the final thing is like what got spat out of the render engine. But a lot of the time that's not true at all. And it makes me wonder with something like this, if maybe they actually did a few different passes of like, here's the far background, here's the near background, and here's another layer of just like the ships. 
And then that all gets combined in compositing. Well, let's take a look at the behind the scenes. Oh. Yeah, so here we can clearly see there's levels of detail that we're seeing as well. So it's like, as they're going down to the earth, all the buildings are literally just like boxes. Yeah, they're blocking out everything here, which is a yeah. good way to do it. Make it all lightweight enough, but you still get the idea of what the final thing's gonna be. Then you replace each of those little blocks with higher detailed buildings and ships. I mean, the fact that we're seeing this like cool shot with this whole like executor rising out of the surface. And this is interesting because it's not the craziest Houdini sim either. It's just like the direction, the pacing, the storytelling around it makes it feel epic. You're just breaking up a box. Like, this is just your basic Voronoi fracture and then, like, rigid body sim. But Houdini is able to, like, intelligently attach all those pieces together mm -hmm. and have them break at certain levels of stress as opposed to everything just crumpling uniformly. Also, handling that many physics objects, too. Which is a like, thing. <laughs> a lot of physics plugins, they just aren't built to make this many fractures. Well, this reminds me of that one, what is it, that Rebel Way shot? Have you seen that one of the Star Destroyer coming out of the, the ice? Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you yeah. seen that one? That one? Oh my gosh. That one is so cool. Oh, yeah. Isn't that Did sweet? the light through the ice. Look at how spicy that sim is. I think they probably saw that and they're like, we got to do that. Yeah, Rebelway is the name of that awesome Houdini education. Yeah, so jo Jordan's watching this stuff. This is definitely like one of those buckle up. Buckle up. <laughs> Wash your hands, buckle up, and like sit yeah. at your computer for five days. But when you come out of the other side, you're like, you can do it. I mean, the only thing that's really janky in this is the faces. And even then, they're not, like, they're not that janky. They're, like, they're interesting because they're not janky video game faces. They're less janky than I would have expected from a CG face, which yeah. is why I was like, it looks like there's like a deep fake pass just applied on top of the CG faces. That's actually exactly what they're doing. So yeah, here's the original CG faces. They look like video game cinematic faces. Computing. <laughs> Computing face. Make face better. <laughs> which is a great solution to like bumping up the quality of your work without having to like hire, you know, 20 people to do it for you. Yeah, because I mean, it allows you to basically have a base face animation that's still like driving it, but you don't need to have the best like shaders and quality. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you know, motion really drives it at the end of the day. You know what? I personally feel like I would have preferred to see the CG faces, but that's some, just me. Some of the shots, the deep fake faces worked great, but I think it was just a matter of like, they're mastering so many disciplines here. So like to also be able to just ace deep faking and one pass, like, it's a lot of stuff to learn. Obviously, this is incredibly inspiring to see, like, a small team be able to pull off something this impressive. But I think it's important to note that it's, like, it's not just some amateur in a bedroom making this, which is, I feel, what most people think of when they hear the term fan film. Yeah, these are it's professionals like, yeah. in their bedrooms. <laughs> these guys know yeah. exactly what they're doing in their bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that nice house. Look at that water hitting the lens. I've seen this. <laughs> Couldn't close the door. There's a... Okay, I see what's going on. It's a glitch. It's an Don't EA game. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny because we can all relate to video games glitching on us. Ah. Hello, fellow gamers. This is really well done, though. It is. It's extremely well yeah. done. It's like there's an art to making stuff glitch in a, I don't, I don't, realistic way? Is that the right way of saying it? Yeah, it's like, like authentic. Nothing is realistic about a glitch. Authentic. Yeah. An authentic. Or like the camera move at the end where it like bobbles back to the corner of the wall. This is so intense. There's so much going on. How much you want to bet that's just a CG person? How much you want to bet this no, is all CG? That's a real person. You think so? Yeah. They walked through that desk flawlessly. Though I will say that the desk came up to just below the bottom of her shirt making an easy compositing line. Wait, did it just loop? Mm -hmm. Is this my favorite ad now? <laughs> what is it even like? Don't live with lag. Is this an internet provider? <laughs> yeah. Verizon? It's like a lot of effort for a Verizon commercial. It's a really cool video. I think you can make an argument that 5G might not be the best, <laughs> like, you know, like ISP situation for you if you're, you know, you're real gamer, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, as a real gamer. Uh. <laughs> what I can definitely tell is that the people who worked on this are very experienced with these types of glitches. <laughs> They're very experienced gamers. <laughs> very experienced gamers. 
Like the polygon between triangles for the yeah. holes in the floor. Like that's a very specific aesthetic. And you pointed out that camera that has like that weird sort of yeah. Bezier animation glitch on right, it. Right like, here. We're I talking love this. glitches to the animation right of the here, camera. Like, er, er. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Which that's a glitch that only people who animate will understand. Right. So that's like them putting in like all kinds of little hints. There's probably so many Easter eggs in this. I gotta wonder, how do you think they did the girl on the bike? It's like if a lot of the stuff, like if we go through this, so that's probably just a picture of a van that's actually there, and they erase it and they just, you know, scoot it around for some shots or have a 3D model of the van. And the tree, when it pops into the van, it's probably a 3D model. But this, like, sure, it's a 3D model bike, but that's a great shot of a person next to it, not on a bike. I think this person was actually riding a bike, and they painted out the bike and the legs and just rebuilt the legs from scratch. Cause I think the jean jacket and the arms and the hair, the helmet, the face, like that's all super realistic, but legs, jeans, shoes, that sort of thing is pretty easy to do and make look photorealistic. Yeah, you're right. Cause also I'm also seeing like this little bike wobble right about here. You see the little wobble yeah. as like the hands grab the handlebar. It's something that is gonna be pretty hard to replicate if it's not a real bike. Yeah, and even like the pressure on the feet as they pedal and stuff, even if the legs are replaced, like it's perfect motion, right? You only get perfect motion like this with somebody actually on a bike. Yeah. Like, Wind in the hair, the balance and the shifting. Everything is so well done. It's very cleanly shot. The VFX are super, super crisp and clean. Like nothing in it you look at and go, oh, that's like a CG thing. Like maybe that cat, sure. But like, yeah, that's like part of the joke. Yeah, but like everything about it, it doesn't look CG, even though it's just like so obviously CG. Like even the clouds in the sky, you know, yeah. you see that? <laughs> Wait, I didn't. The clouds are CG? Yeah. It's just one cloud picture that they're just duplicating. <laughs> You're right. It's a cloud sprite. <laughs> That's a Mario reference in the background there. That's a cloud from Mario. Seriously, straight up. It's the shape of the cloud from Mario. Yeah. Like, oh my god. This is what I'm saying. Like, it's so clean. The philosophy they're applying to this is like the same philosophy that like we applied to all our early VFX videos and like same with like the Freddy W videos, which is you film your elements for real and you do your trick with real footage because then it looks real in a really compelling way. Whereas if you get heavy into like putting CG into your scene, just trying to sell CG as real is like a huge task in and of itself. And you miss out on like the fun concept stuff. Yeah, like there, for instance, that dude, it's a real bus they're filming on and he's a real person there, but the jean jacket comes to his wrist and his hand is CG. So they can change the shape and position of that hand as it grips different things that pop in and out of existence. Corporate bullshit aside, it's a really cool video. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. <laughs> I think that's the summary. The creative team killed it with this project. I think that is something we can agree on. I just like seeing like the high quality version of shots that we've done so many times yeah. over the years. I'm like, yeah. They did. They nailed it. Yeah, it's cool seeing like the whole aesthetic of like video game glitches in real life. Like we've made multiple videos with that as like a theme for what we do. Yeah, I think like we did the glitch video, obviously. Yeah. We glitch, but also the uh, the Matrix yeah, one. Yeah, I was about to say uh, early access Matrix. The early access Matrix video is like the same thing. I'll bet some people on this team watch corridor videos. Not saying that they took our ideas or anything like that. No, 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 no. We don't own video game glitches as a concept. No, but, like, not at all. We live to inspire. <laughs> James, or well, Jim, sorry. I, I don't know which one you prefer. Uh, consider subscribing, thank you. Statistically speaking, that's your name. So speaking of glitches and stuff. <laughs> this movie, we keep, it, it, this is an evergreen, as we call it. <laughs> this movie just serious. keeps coming back. We're looking at the Polar Express, this, so check this out. Is this a serious glitch or a non-funny glitch? Wait. Can I spot you'll see, this glitch? You'll see. Pay close attention to the elves. There's the elves. Oh! I saw it! Did you see it? I totally saw it. What, did, did you see it? <laughs> no. Are you still there? <laughs> <laughs> no, let's see it. Let's see it. Go back. Oh, damn. It's like, where's Waldo? <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. That made it in. <laughs> I don't see it. I don't see it. There's too many elves. I can't see it. Yeah, yeah so, you know, you, there's too many elves. That's what they were saying too when they were working on this. <laughs> Guys, there's too many elves. And it's like, just do the shot. Dude, hold on. Oh, okay. okay, so look below the P in Polar Express. All right, look directly. See the P. Now look down from that P. Right about now. Oh, wait, I see it. <laughs> Oh man, look at him go! <laughs> <laughs> Apparently one of the elves decided to ride Heelys around for the day. <laughs> what we're seeing is an army of elves just marching along with a bunch of different animations, but one of them doesn't have any animation on the elf at all. It's just in a walking pose, 
and it's animated along a spline probably just going along. Really so weird. it's first off just kind of funny to watch, but I think it's also something that is all too easy to have happen. In <laughs> you have all of these different 3D models of these elves. They all have what are called bones in them that you can animate to have them do different animations. And some of them are lined up like those two guys there in front are perfectly in sync with each other. And so if you just have one animation for all the elves, it's going to look too uniform. So the challenge becomes like adding a bunch of different types of animations and scattering it across there. So when you're doing huge crowds, basically you're doing scripts because you're not going to actually assign a unique animation to each person by hand. There's just too many elves. In my <laughs> Maybe. There's too there's many too, elves. There's too many elves. Too many elves. Well, I mean, sorry, you can, but if you're going to make a bunch of characters like this in mass, it's not necessarily going to be a, all right, let's pick the animation for each guy here. There's a possibility that when you're assigning the animations, one doesn't get an animation. Either something glitches out and it assigns like a null animation and nothing happens. Or what is could be even funnier is if maybe they pre the shot or had like an initial file set up that had like sliding elves. And then they took that project file, duplicated it, deleted all the pre elves except accidentally left one in. <laughs> I, I doubt that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> what, I think, what I think happened is that that elf originally did have an animation, but when it got sent to the render farm, the link to that animation got broken. Because that happens a lot of the time when you're dealing with like networked assets. Sometimes just like the file path just gets corrupted somehow. The program doesn't know that. It's just looking at an empty folder and it's like, oh, there, I guess there's no animation here. But you don't know that until after you get the render back because it looks just fine on your computer. But it's rendering it on a farm on a bunch of different computers and you're getting it back and that happens more frequently than people really sort of explain. I want to find more glitches in this movie. <laughs> because this, if any movie to find glitches in, this is the ultimate one. The ultimate prize of funny glitches because it already feels like on the brink of glitchiness. <laughs> the movie itself feels like one big glitch. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I don't mean to talk crap about Polar Express. I mean, yeah, we've, we've looked at it before. It was a very ambitious movie, had limitations from the technology and whatnot. We're not hating on the movie. It's just It's delightful funny. to see that even your gods have flaws. That's what it comes down to. It's like, there's how much can you really point out and laugh when you have a bunch of, like, incredibly high-level experts doing something? It's like... Now, not to mention, like, what we're missing in the shot is something that is a really artistic composite that's actually happening that we're totally ignoring right now. Watch the characters and how they, they transition throughout the scene. We go there and the cabin illuminates more and everyone gets blurry oh, yeah. and then Whoa. they fade into these 2D cutouts and then they just kind of go off. It becomes off. like an illustration from the book. Exactly. Like, Whoa. that's actually really cool. It's also really <laughs> clever because it simplifies the amount of work that has to be done. So now they don't have to render the inside of the train cabin for the entire length of the cabin when we're really just looking at a bunch of elves doing flippy floppies. For some reason, I feel like that's a frame that was directly inspired from the book too. Oh, yeah. I think you're right. This was actually pointed out as a suggestion for us to look at in the comments. And I now want to see what other funny glitches are in this movie, The Polar Express. So leave a comment down below on this video if you ever find any more. So I told you guys it was a chill session of VFX Artists React. You know, we're not looking at giant movies with billion dollar budgets. We're looking at the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs>